So, uh, welcome. I want to thank everybody for coming out here tonight to our patient appreciation dinner. By a show of hands, how many people in here want to be happy and healthy? Woo! Awesome, you came to the right place. Wait, hold on, another question. By a show of hands, how many people in here have a birthday? If it's not your birthday, shut the radio off on your cell phone. That way we know if your phone goes off in the middle of the talk, we'll all get up and sing happy birthday to you. Now there is one person that has a birthday today, it's my buddy Joe, so everybody say happy birthday. So for those of you who I don't know who I am, my name is Dr. Larry R. Beitman. We started up a cervical chiropractic of Monmouth back in 2005. And the purpose of this evening is twofold. First of all, we want to say thank you to our practice members for allowing us to serve you. It is an honor to provide your health care, your family's health care. And this is a way we say thank you. We spend the night together in friendship and fun and inspiration. The other point of this evening, so many patients through the years have said, Dr. Arbeiten, I know people who just need to know what to do, but I can't explain it. And so our practice members have been gracious enough and cared enough and had enough courage to bring so many of you here tonight to hear about what it is that we actually do in our office so that you can suffer less or so that you perform at your best. Maybe you're not suffering and we all want to be the best versions of ourselves. We're going to talk about how upper cervical care can help that, help you achieve that. So um, there's a few people that we need to introduce uh, this evening before we introduce our main speaker. Um, we have an unbelievable team in our practice, and it is growing. Um, I have to start out by first uh, introducing my comrade, uh, Dr. Sean Pura. Yeah. I've worked with many doctors, I know many doctors, and I've got to tell you, there aren't many doctors that have a bigger heart than Dr. Piero. He's a true gift to our community, and uh, thank you, Dr. Lai, you do. Um, our newest addition literally arrived last Monday, um, has been practicing for the past year at a very well-known upper cervical clinic in Seattle. He's originally from Wisconsin. We heavily recruited him, and his name is Dr. Matthias Rivers. We'll give him a big first of all. how new he is. He didn't know how to get onto Route 9 from Union Hill Road. Okay? That's how he but he did bring rain. Okay. And then for those of you who uh, have been in our practice um, and understand uh, how our practice operates and takes care of a lot of people, we can never, ever, 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 ever do it without the three ladies who actually run our practice. I always joke that I just work here and they are in charge. And so I want to introduce our amazing team that creates this unbelievable feeling and vibe in the office when you come in. And first I want to introduce to stand up Stacy, Stacy Jaffe. Five years of service. Uh, Ms. Samantha Greenberg, four years of service. Ms. Christine Malloy, four years of service. And we have another doctor joining our practice. He's going to be here tonight, and he will be in the office in three weeks. So we are expanding so we can serve our community's needs um, by the month. Um, so uh, welcome, 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 welcome. If you are guests, you have a red badge. And if you are practice members, you have a gold badge. And then we ran out of gold badges, so you may have a red badge with a star. <laughs> so if you are a guest, ask questions, talk to the people at the uh, table. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you. And there's four doc there's three, three, four doctors here. Ask your questions to us after tonight's talk. So um, it is an honor to introduce to you tonight's speaker. Dr. Justin Brown, originally from Philadelphia, flew up today from Florida. He practices in Coral Springs. He is a devoted husband, father of three beautiful little girls, and an avid crossfitter. He has built one of the largest upper cervical practices in the world. He has 
trained, created 10 upper cervical doctors. He's a certified Nuka upper cervical doctor. He speaks on some of the largest platforms in our profession. He was just asked to do a TED talk. He will be the first upper cervical doctor teaching the concept of upper cervical care at the TED Talks, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. He, um, he trains doctors all over the country, and when I think of Dr. Brown, he is the true definition of a servant. Literally, he left his practice and his family to share with all of us in our community a selfless, selfless act, and that's just the surface of who he is. I met him about 10 years ago when he was a rising star in the profession, and now he sits at top of the profession as one of the leaders. We are in for such a treat tonight. Let's give him a strong new joyce welcome. Dr. Christian Brown. Thank you. system, even what it means to drive safely. You know, all these things, we have value systems, we have belief systems that we've developed. Whether you believe in chiropractic or you don't believe in chiropractic, that has nothing to do with this evening. Is that fair? Can everybody be open to that? Okay. Even if you're a skeptic, I love that because I was the most skeptical of all. I like to say discerning. I like, this, I like that, that word better. But the point is that we're going to be discussing a way to look at the world that may just change your perspective a little bit, that will give you the possibility of seeing life differently, of creating more freedom in your life, creating the ability to actually be really, truly healthy. What does that even mean? What does it mean to be truly healthy? One of the questions that I ask many patients when they come in is I say, when was the last time you felt truly healthy? When you're a baby, I heard someone say. <laughs> and you know, that's not that uncommon. And you know what the most common answer is? I can't even remember. People often say, I can't even remember. So let's just discuss that. If I were to say, what does it mean to be healthy? Most people's answer would be just not being sick. Right? If I'm not sick, by default, you think you're healthy. But I will tell you, there is a vast difference between being healthy and not being sick. Would you agree? Yeah, there's definitely a big difference, okay? So think about this, you wake up tomorrow morning, you feel rested. So you actually get up, you know that snooze button? I call it the lose button, yeah. right? So if you don't hit your, your lose button, you get right up out of bed, you feel recharged, you feel revitalized, you feel rested. Well, I lost some of you already. You're like, I don't remember that. I, I don't recall that, that being true for me, but you have that feeling of being like, wow, I feel good, I feel energized, I'm ready to take on my day. And then you have some form of, of exercise or movement or stretch. You realize that we are the only animals, you call us animals, I think we're animals of sort, that doesn't stretch upon waking. Every animal stretches. I have a newborn baby, I have a two month old. And first thing she does when she wakes up is she stretches. She moves her body. So imagine if you were to stretch and move your body and create freedom within your joints and, and to get your blood flowing you know, in that morning. And then to have a really healthy, nutritious breakfast. And then to feel really clear, maybe a time of prayer. 
You're going to read something that's going to build your mind up, that would, that would feed you something positive, a healthy, positive message. Meaning we're not flipping off the news, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's the bad news, right? So we're not doing that. But to have something positive that we're feeding our mind, and then to be able to do something productive. So whether that means you go to your work, uh, but you do something for others. You do something that's going to help other people live a better life. You're going to have something that has meaning to it. You're going to feel fulfillment within that. And then you're to be able to go through that day and really have no aches, have no pains, not to get fatigued when it comes to 2 o'clock, not feel like you need to go and, and, and hit Starbucks up right after lunch, or, or be able to go home and have um, as much energy for your family at the end of the day as when you started the day, or even more. Be able to have a meaningful relationship with your kids, with your grandkids, be able to have that, 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 that time of love, and then to be able to have a special time with your spouse, and then have you know, a really positive, restful evening. You know, does that sound familiar? Is that common for many people here? I see like one and a half hands. Okay. So it's not that common, but what I can suggest is that what we're going to discuss this evening is how to make that go from something that seems so far off in the distance to something that's much closer to a reality. Do I have your attention yet? Okay. Is this on? Hello? Okay. You guys are listening. Okay. So that's what we're here to discuss. And I will tell you that the current system, we talked about there's a belief system that each one of us has. Whether you know it or not, you all have a belief system. What I will tell you is that the current system is far removed from what we just discussed. It's completely removed from that. Meaning that if you're an average American, you're six years old, you're on six medications. You slept on average six hours. So that means you're about an hour to two hours in sleep deprivation. Okay? So you feel very tired and fatigued. You probably didn't eat a healthy uh, breakfast. You probably didn't exercise. You probably didn't pray or meditate or read something positive. You're probably going through a job that feels very stressful. Uh, you go through, I'm, I'm stressing you guys out as I'm talking about this. Right? You're like, did this guy watch me today? But this is the average for most people. And so you go through that process. And so you think that your body's going to break down, that there's going to be aches and pains, that there's going to be headaches, there's going to be migraines, there's going to be back pain, there's going to be numbness. There's going to be, your body is going to be definitely removed from that place of health that we discussed. It's not going to be that place of health. Does that make sense? So what happens is people depend on the system. What does the system look like? You go to the doctor, what does the doctor give you? Pills. Bills are based on cause or effect. They're based on effects. Okay, if you have high blood pressure, you go take a high blood pressure pill. Is that going to fix the reason why you had high blood pressure? No. 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 Does that make sense? It doesn't fix the reason why you have high blood pressure. If you have back pain and you take an Advil, does that fix the reason why you have back pain? No. Do you have back pain because you have lack of Advil in your bloodstream? <laughs> Is that why had, oh, I just had lack of Advil in my bloodstream. I was Advil deficient. <laughs> but isn't that true? And all of you are laughing. You probably have your bottle of Advil in your medicine cabinet. That's right. In, am, I, am I right? So that's what we've been taught. Big Pharma's done a really good job getting inside our brains, teaching us this stuff. Do you think the pharmaceutical industries, many of which are right here in the great state of New Jersey, do you think they're really interested in your health? No, they're not. They're not. They're not interested. In that. Do you think the insurance companies are interested in your health? No. True. No. What about Medicare? What about the government? Right. So I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying there, there's good people in all those industries. So here, here we are. There's really good people in all those industries. But the reality is, you've got to be smart about this. You are your own best health advocate. Everybody, hear me on that. So who's responsible for your health? You are. You're responsible for your health. And so when it comes to getting healthy, if you just fall inside the system, you're probably going to become a statistic. And statistically, in this country, it doesn't look too good. Okay? I think no matter what side of the aisle you're on, we can all agree our healthcare system is broken. We couldn't even agree on how broken it was. You guys get what I mean? So there's a problem inside of the system as it stands right now. It's not working. So we've got to look at something outside of the current system if we're going to expect a different outcome. Does that make sense for everybody? Let's talk about where does the health even come from? Where does health come from? Because if we, we've been taught that 
you're either healthy or you're sick, you either have symptoms or you don't, uh, you're either in a state of disease or you're not. I mean, this is kind of what, what we've been taught, but the reality is that there's a continuum. We all fall on some level in that continuum. And that there's one system that is more important than any other system in your entire body that runs, regulates, and controls, adapts, runs the entire show, guys. So everything that's happening inside your body, every single moment of your life, is under the direct control of one system. And what system is that? The nervous system. Your nervous system. Now let me ask you, the last time you went to go see your doctor, the first thing they did was they checked and evaluated the function of your nervous system, right? No. Isn't that crazy? Hold on, so everybody in this room collectively just told me that there's one system that runs regulates, controls your heart, your lungs, the fact that you can even hear me right now, the fact that you can interpret what I'm saying to you right now, the fact that you're digesting this salad, you're turning into eyeball cells, heart cells, kidney cells, liver cells, you're, you're, everything that happens inside you happens to your nervous system, and yet your well-trained, well-educated doctor did not check your central nervous system. How in the world did that happen? How in the world did that happen? Well, the good news is, we have very well qualified doctors right here that do exactly that. That is their life's calling, is to do that very thing, is to look at and evaluate that master system of your body. So get this, guys. Your brain is in charge of everything that happens inside your body. It's the most magnificent computer that's ever been created. Steve Jobs has nothing on your brain, okay? Your brain can literally create millions upon millions of life force signals that are sent from your brain down your spinal cord, out spinal nerves, every second of your life that keeps you alive. Your nervous system is striving, is fighting to keep you alive. I'm mean, to prove it to you. You can go minutes without breathing. You can go multiple minutes without your heart beating. The moment your brain ceases function, ceases to send life through your body, that's the moment you're considered to pass. You realize that? Yeah, that's true. Okay. So it is your life system. Your nervous system is your life system. It's what runs the entire show. Every single organ of your body, whether we talk about your heart, your cardiovascular system, your immune system, your endocrine system, all of those systems are directly dependent upon that nervous system. So while maybe you, as a woman, you're running out because you're told you have low thyroid, and they're going and they're, pull, they're, they're pumping you full of Synthroid or some other thyroid drug. Have we ever evaluated the signal that goes to the thyroid? As you're running out for the blood pressure pills, wondering how we can lower our blood pressure, have they ever evaluated the signals that come from the cervical spine that actually go to that area that controls your blood pressure? As people are running out for shots and for surgeries for their spine, have we ever evaluated the, the fact that there's stress in that area that can be affecting those nerves that could be causing that problem? You see, if we're not actually looking for and acknowledging the fact that there's an underlying fundamental problem, then we're dealing with an effect. And if we just deal with effects, we're never going to fix the cause. So will the problem persist? Yeah. Anybody here seen the recent uh, news on Steve Kerr, the, the basketball coach for the Gold State Warriors? You see this? It was just on, uh, all, all over the internet and, and, and um, sports center. He received a back surgery in 2015. And what happened was when they were doing this back surgery, and granted, look, this is a, the coach of the number one basketball team on the planet. Okay? His access to the best neurologist, the best orthopedist, the best spine surgeons, and he's access to all of it. Right? And the best of the best says, you need surgery. So he goes and he gets a surgery, and they nick the surrounding sac that protects the spinal cord and it ends up being what's called the cerebral spinal fluid, CSF, and it leaks out. And it leaks out. This is the best of the best in the plant doing the surgery. And so ever since he's been suffering with debilitating pain, debilitating migraines, so much so that his team is in the playoffs right now and he just announced he can't even coach. He's not playing. He can't even coach, which tells you the kind of misery this guy's in. Okay. So if we're to look at the current system of essentially when you have a pain, let's just talk about back pain, for example, or neck pain, the current system is to drug it until the drugs no longer work, so to speak, right, no longer work. Then we do cortisone shots. When the cortisones no longer work, what do we go to now? Surgery. Surgery. By the way, because he had one failed surgery, 
The coach, speaker, he got a second surgery, suffering even worse yet. And on average, 35% of people who get a spine surgery will have a second one within three years. Okay? My, the record in my office is I actually saw an MD. He was a medical doctor, he was a patient, he had 12 spinal surgeries. 12. So much so, at the age of 50, he could no longer practice. Done. Out. So, the current system is essentially based on trying to treat effects, but the problem again with that is, guys, if you don't fix the reason why the problem got so bad, it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. Some people say, well, you know, I was just taught that, you know, if you're not broke, you don't fix it. Right before a death before Dr. White, if it's not broke, you don't fix it. Well, I can tell you guys right now, 80% of the population right now suffers with some form of spinal pain. That being said, the truth is that more than 80% of people actually suffer with a condition where their spine is locked in stress in an imbalanced state, which will cause some form of not only pain, but nerve damage. And we talked about what the nerve system does, right? It's vital, it does everything. Now, if you don't believe the power of the nervous system, everybody do this for me. Wiggle your toes. Everybody wiggle your toes. You wiggle your toes? Right. I'm watching them. Okay. It's your birthday. Mine's tomorrow. So, right. so, so the whole thing on that is you wiggle your toes. The only reason your toes can wiggle is because your brain sent an impulse down your spinal cord, straight down your leg, right down your toes to wiggle your toes. You ever thought about that? You don't have brains in your feet. There's no brains in your feet. Okay? There's signal, there's impulses, and it happens at 270 miles an hour. 270 miles an hour, signals are being sent up and down your spinal cord. So we understand that the nervous system is what runs, regulates, controls, adapts every single function of your entire body. How is it that we can address that and take care of that system to make sure that we maximize expression of function, of intelligence through your body? Do you guys believe that your body was designed intelligently? We believe that. We believe there's an intelligence inside of your body. Can anybody come up here and explain to me how your body knew how to sleep and, and recharge and regulate and take care of every single cell and tissue of your body. Now, it recreates new healthy cells every single 100, 190 days. And your body literally entirely changes over how to create new healthy liver cells, how your body gets rid of unhealthy cells and brings in new healthy cells, regulates through your nervous system and your DNA and your arm. Can anybody do that? Let me come up here and do all that. Okay. All right. Because even if you could, you could never, even if you know every textbook on the planet, you can never understand everything that your body does for you. True, Marcia? Yes, it's true. It's true. There's so much power inside your body, way beyond our understanding, way beyond our comprehension. So what we have to do is we have to look at this design that the only system of your entire body, the only organ of your entire body that's fully encased in bone happens to be your central nervous system. Skull, spine. The only organ, only organ system fully encased in bone. Is that intelligent? That's an intelligent design. I don't think you can improve on that. Right? That's by design. And so looking at that system and seeing, well, how do we make sure that we maximize the way that the brain communicates to the body and that the body communicates back to the brain to allow for this harmonious interaction, which we call health? Full coordination. Brain to body, body back to brain. Harmony where the body can take care of itself, where it can send the proper impulse to the proper place at the proper time so that the body can then recreate health. Think of it, isn't that beautiful? That's what the body does. That's the incredible wisdom that's inside of your body. Your body knows exactly how many times it needs to breathe this minute. It knows how many times that heart needs to beat. It knows that if I am from Florida and I come to Jersey, that I shiver to warm my body up. I didn't say, go, go, shiver cells. My body started to shiver, and I ended up getting goosebumps, which trapped air next to my skin to try to bring warmth towards my skin. It's incredible, right? So the body has all these innate capacities within it to be able to take care of itself to allow for me to survive. And not just survive, but thrive if we do this right. So let's talk about that. There is one particular area of the spine that's different than all the rest, and it happens to be at the very top. Okay? Everybody feel that little bump right underneath your ear? There's a little bump. Everybody feel that? You dig it out. I was going to pick on you. Got it? All right. I'll come find it for you. Right? So there's a little bump there. Okay? That little bump is called your atlas vertebrae. 
Atlas. Everybody remember the Greek god Atlas? He holds up the world. You've heard of Atlas, right? So Atlas, as its name, holds up your world, which is your head, which encompasses your brain, your skull. And the Atlas is the only free-floating vertebrae of your whole spine. You have a disc. Some of you know more about a disc than you want to know. If you ever had a herniation or a slip disc or a prolapse disc. But the only vertebrae of the 24 vertebrae of your spine that doesn't have a disc is that Atlas vertebrae. It's the only one. And that Atlas has the most motion. So the, this, the Atlas is the only place you can move your head like that. If you can't move your head like that, you should be able to soon after you see these guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss that. But that vertebrae has the greatest range of motion. It's the smallest, okay? It's got a little opening about the size for your thumb to go through, which is where your spinal cord goes through. And so it's got the greatest range of motion, the narrowest opening with the most important part of your spinal cord that goes through. Is everybody tracking with me? Sure. There's a conundrum there. We've got the greatest range of motion, largest part of the spinal cord, and the narrowest opening. Huh. It's the weak link. Have everybody heard you're only as strong as your weakest link? Right. So could it be possible that that vertebrae could shift, twist, and lock out of alignment through sleeping on the sofa? Guys, hello, sleeping on the sofa. <laughs> Got your head locked up, right? You just nestled in for a good Sunday watching some sports. <laughs> Let's talk if you're a Jets fan. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but standing up into the overhead compartment as I dropped out of the sky. Have you ever been on a plane and you're like, okay, this would be a nice landing, and all of a sudden you drop out of the, the, out of the air, right? And I see everybody's heads, because I'm trained at this, right? So I lock my neck as we, as we uh, land, but I see all these heads go boom and whip forward, and nobody's paying attention to it. What if you've ever been rear-ended? What if, what if you stood up and you didn't realize the cap was open? Wham! Anybody ever done that? Right? Anybody sit at a computer? Of the day? Anybody traveling on those little jets? You don't fit on airplanes, man. And I'm sure you travel a lot, right? Get squeezed on these little airplanes. Uh, sleeping in hotels, you know, all these types of things. A cumulative, small or large traumas will create a small shift which creates massive impact in the way that that nervous system functions. Would it be possible that stress, anybody here have any stress? Good, I didn't think so. But would it be possible that stress would affect your physiology? What does stress do to your blood pressure? Up. What does it do to your digestion? Down. What does it do to your muscle tension? Up. What does it do to your mental clarity? Down. What does it do to your fatigue? Up. You guys get what I mean? Did I stress you out? Okay. So emotional stress, do you guys think emotional stress can affect you physically? A hundred percent. 100%. Anybody here seen somebody that just had a close family member pass or get really sick and then all of a sudden they got sick? Yeah, very stressful, right? It affects your body, it affects your, your health, your physiology. What about, what about the thought of having some toxic stress? If there was multiple medications in the body, if there was uh, maybe poor nutrition, if there was uh, drugs or alcohol, do you think those are gonna affect your physiology? Yes, and so again, you're only as healthy as your weakest link. So if there's chemical, emotional, or physical stressors that can accumulate from the birth process through learning to walk, and I've seen my kids, wham, step, head first, walking, just learning to walk, not riding a bike, falling off the bike. Then you go through the school process, now they sit at the laptops all day, you know? Then you go through and you learn to drive a car. Most of us got an accident in their first year. And then you go through all these traumas and stresses throughout life. What happens is those traumas, how are we doing back there? We good? Yeah. All right, making sure I'm checking on you guys. All those traumas and stresses, they accumulate throughout life. What does it show up as? It shows up as a headache. It shows up as a back pain. It shows up as fatigue. It shows up as ah, it pinch. It shows up as shoulder pain. It shows up as maybe numbness. There could be numbness somewhere. There, it could be something that goes down the leg. It could be the knee. The knee starts up. But the body is in a stress, imbalance, unhealthy position. And we're putting chemicals in. We're putting chemicals in thinking that's going to make us healthier. Doesn't it sound strange when I lay it out that way? Yeah. It sounds strange. But that's the belief system that we've all assumed 
through media, through TV, through magazines, through all parents, through the way things have been. So if I can ask you to change your perspective, if that's your perspective, I'm not going to try to change any of you. Any of you try to change your spouse? That doesn't work. <laughs> okay. But if I can ask you to just change your perspective slightly and, and broaden your understanding of what your body does for you and how to maximize the natural healing that your body holds within, then I can guarantee you, you can rely less on the system, rely more on your body to be able to take care of itself because there's only one power that will heal you. And that's the power that's right inside you. Did everybody hear that? The only power that can heal you is the power that's inside you. That's true. That's the truth. Okay? Your body is, the, is fully capable of restoration. Doesn't matter what condition, doesn't matter what disease, your body, there's not a condition on the planet the body is not healed from. Now, could it take work? Yeah. Could it take change? Yes. Is it possible that someone could come into to school as a wrestling coach and they don't have, they're not very good as a freshman, but you work with them and work with them and all of a sudden they become a very strong wrestler? Absolutely. What does it take? It takes proper training. It takes the proper coaching. It takes the proper nutrition. It takes all that skill. It takes all that. And we have a team of doctors that are right here that are specifically trained to take you from wherever you're at right now to be able to help you to maximize the performance of that nervous system. And how does that happen? Well, we talk about that atlas. That atlas is very slippery. That atlas can shift and lock and twist. And the thing about it is that you could be that way for years or even decades and not even have a symptom, not even have a neck pain. Why is that? 96% of what's going on inside you, you don't even feel. You don't even feel it. Anybody here know somebody that had cancer, a body full of cancer, and they didn't have any symptoms? Anybody here know somebody that just dropped dead a heart attack and no signs of heart disease? Yeah? yeah? Yes? We got one right here. So the point is, guys, we can't base our health solely on how we feel. We've got to en enlist help to be able to maximize the expression of that intelligence so that we know our body is not only feeling great, it's functioning great, and it's working at its very best. Who here wants to be their best? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I think it's only natural to want to be your best. So when we look at how the body performs, when we look at, at, at this nervous system, you've got to realize that you've got to get the relationship of that skull, the relationship of that atlas, and the relationship of the rest of that cervical spine fully in balance. Fully in balance, meaning that head can't be shifted, blocked, or twisted more than half a degree, or your body is not functioning right. you got to get that. You got to, if there's any stress on that brain stem, your body and your, and your brain are a disconnect. Imagine if you use your cell phone and only, let's say only 70% of the signals were coming through. You were losing 30% of the, the conversation. How long are you going to use that cell phone? You're taking that thing back to rise. You're not happy with that thing. Okay? You're not using that. But I'll tell you, some of you right now, that's exactly what's happening inside your body. 70% of that communication is going through. And because it's been a gradual, slow decline, it's just the way you think it has to be. I hear that all the time. Doc, I thought I had to be that way. I thought that's just the way life was going to be. Right? I'm sure you've heard that, Doc, right? I, I thought this, this is what I became accustomed to. I thought this was just the way it's going to be. But I'll tell you guys, if you're looking for something different, you've got to check this out. What is this? It's called upper cervical care. And upper cervical care, I believe, is the missing link. It's the greatest hidden secret in healthcare today. Meaning that I believe that we can make massive change across the country, across the world, if we were to get people this specific type of information, at least get a checkup. Not all of you have this problem, but a lot of you do, statistically speaking. Most of you do. And what it, what it is, is that we are able to evaluate specifically how that head sits on top of that atlas and find out if there's any stress or pressure. It's called a subluxation. Everybody say subluxation. Ready? One, two, three. Subluxation. Subluxation is a pretty good job. So subluxation is, refers to that misalignment, which creates a, a stress on that nervous system, and it interferes with the way the brain and the body communicate. What does that show up as? Well, it shows up as a migraine. It shows up as a headache. It shows up as 
facial numbness and paralysis like a Josephia, a 12-year-old girl that just came in with Bell's palsy two weeks ago. Her whole entire face, you've heard of Bell's palsy? Her whole face was not, she, she smiled, only half her face smiled. And she got two alignments, two specific scientific corrective alignments, and immediately that nerve flow from her facial nerve, from her neck, came straight back to her face, and her Bell's palsy is miraculously gone. Okay. Or maybe it's Barbara who suffered for, gosh, she must have suffered for 15 years with migraine headaches. And I met her 10 years ago when I moved to Florida to start the first upper cervical practice. You believe that? There was no upper cervical practice in South Florida. And, and I met her and she said, well, I don't believe in chiropractic. I don't want to get, get my neck cracked. I said, I want to get my neck cracked either. I wouldn't do that. But I do something specialized on upper cervical. She said, oh, I'm listening. And since that point, she's referred over 125 people to my office. Dr. Larry's first patient ever was here. Where's she at? Linda. Right here. Linda, there she is. First patient ever. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> so think about it, guys. The head weighs 10 pounds. You got a 2-ounce bone. That shifts and locks. Now, all of a sudden, we got a pinched nerve here. Now, you may feel that. You may not. You got to realize this is a slow degenerative process. So you often don't feel it. Next thing you know, you're starting to get numbness, but don't worry, we got a fix for that. We're just gonna cut your wrist. We call that carpal tunnel. The problem with that is the scar tissue builds right back over it, and it doesn't address the, the cause. 75% of carpal tunnel comes from the neck, okay? So when the head and neck shift out of position, you think the body's gonna compensate? You think it'll be compensation? Yes, right? So the head and neck shifts, the shoulders twist. Go to Walmart, you'll see a lot of this. So the shoulders shift, now the hips twist. Right? You guys are going to look at everybody differently now. You're going to be checking everybody's postures. <laughs> no, seriously, you should. You look at your family first. You should be going and looking at your family first. Okay? Look to see if their ears are off, off balance. Look to see if their body's twisted. But if you'll see the shoulders shift. You'll see the hips twist because we have more of our body weight going down here. What's that end up being? Low back pain. Low back pain. Okay? Now all of a sudden that back says twisted and locked. Now all of a sudden it starts to create degenerative disc disease. I'm sure some of you that have seen your actually have seen some of that disease. But if you go to your doctor, they'll say, ah, it's just normal aging. Huh, that's not normal aging. I'll show you actually the 75 year olds have perfect this throughout their whole entire spine. That's not normal aging. Then the, that twist and lock is going to change the way you walk. And if you walk differently, you think that can wear out your hip, you think it can wear out your knee, you think that can create feet problems. Yes. Absolutely. Right? So again, they say, oh, doc, you know, I got knee pain. They say, that's just arthritis. You're just getting older. Well, how old is my other name? <laughs> okay. so, some of you caught that. Some of you will get that one at the end of the day. But get hungry, I know. I'm getting there, guys. So the point is that if your body is in this stressed, locked, and twisted position, then it's just not functioning its best. And that's the reality of it. And you will have symptoms. You, there will be conditions that will ensue. Uh, this has been directly linked to high blood pressure. This has been directly linked to digestive uh, dysfunctions, uh, irritable bowel, constipation, issues like that. Certainly sciatica is one of the most common things that we see sciatica, um, lower back issues. And the nice thing about the upper cervical care is that it doesn't require any popping, cracking, or twisting. None of that. It's the gentlest thing in the world. And for all your patients here, does it feel like magic? <laughs> it does, right? You know, new patients are blown away like, Doc, I don't think you did anything. That's how light it is. That's why it's beautiful for children. That's why the children should be checked. Why would you wait for your kids to get to the point where they have all that damage and degeneration in their spine to have their spines taken care of? Do you wait until your children's teeth hurt to take them to the dentist? No, that's insane. You know, Jimmy, do your teeth hurt? No. All right, we're not going to the dentist, right? That doesn't make any sense. So the point is that get your kids checked, get your grandchildren checked. The stress that builds up in the body, oftentimes, we, we, when, by the time we see you, we can only slow it down. We can only slow it down. So the sooner you can get checked, if you're a guest here, the sooner you can get checked by an upper cervical specialist, by getting a very thorough, and I'll tell you, if anybody's thorough, it's Dr. Whiteman and his well-trained team. This man is thorough, okay? But you're gonna get a thorough exam, you're going to get a series of very specialized x-rays. We're going to be able to determine exactly what the problem is. What the problem is, and then what's necessary. If you can get help, and then what help is necessary. Okay. So there's probably a question you have about that. 
I can sit here and tell you story after story about all of these people that we've been able to help in our office. Uh, most recently, this woman, Janice, who's had five spine surgeries. She literally just was in agony. She was miserable every day. Because if you don't have your health, if you're in pain, it affects every aspect of your life. You will not be the person you are destined to be. If you're in pain, if you're in agony, if you're suffering, if you're on medication, if you're distorted, if you're not the person God intended you to be. So she goes through our, our process of gets a special evaluation that I'm talking about, and we find there's massive damage to her brainstem. We do a very gentle like correction, and all of a sudden her body starts to heal. And all of a sudden she stops taking all her medications. All of a sudden she feels alive. And since that time, just a few months ago when she began, she'd been referring to person where she's screaming it from the mountaintop because it completely changed her life. Completely changed her life. And I know I could go around here and I can talk to many of you that have had that same experience. I know we have a, a, a couple that I'd like to invite up. Um, Dawn and Katie. Katie, come on up. Okay. She puts you on the spot. But you know, this is really courageous that she's coming up to speak. Um, Katie's 16 years old. Is that correct? Okay, 16. And you have a mic. Katie, come on. All right, everybody give a round of applause for Katie. Hi, um, I'm Katie, as he said. Um, so my family and I, uh, we went to the Melton County Fair in the lovely pouring rain, as it is now. Mm -hmm. And my sister was on the quest just randomly, and she came across the upper cervical tent and found Dr. Puro who was giving like almost a free examination. And he found, well, when he looked at me, he said like one of my legs was like a bit longer than the other and I was like scared about that. And he was like, well, you know, if you get checked out, we can see what's going on. But before that, um, I had a migraine for about six months. And on top of it, I was in school, I was in the marching band. So it was really, really hard keeping everything and I just wanted to sleep. So having the migraine really pushed me back a bit. But finding uh, that the cervical tent really made a difference. And now I don't have the migraine anymore. And I forget how long I have been migraine free. But it's really changed my life. And it's made quite a difference. And I would really recommend going to upper cervical if you are not already. Good. Thank you. Beautiful, and you know, thank God they were out there to to serve in the community that way. Because the reality is that Katie at 16 would have been put on the Imitrex and the Topamax and the whole slew of drugs that are, are, could have literally altered her life forever. So, what we're talking about, guys, is so powerful. It changes lives. It saves lives. This is again the whole reason I'm here is for you guys. Tonight is all about you. But tonight's also about action. If you're serious about this, I encourage you, don't, don't delay. Don't, don't have regret about not making a step in the right direction tonight. If this is something that makes sense to you, go for it. Okay. At 21 years old, there was a boy that had such bad fatigue. He was sleeping through all his classes. He was driving home at night, and he plowed through a construction zone, fell sick at the wheel. Construction barrels bouncing off his car. And the current system that he was going through was offering him different medications and telling him to sleep more, although he was sleeping 14 to 16 hours a day. And he ended up pursuing health on his own because he was frustrated that he wasn't getting answers. And he did his own research. He found a specialist in Chicago that did research specifically on chronic fatigue and showed very positive results. So the boy went to go see this doctor. He was eight years old. The doctor was 80 years old when he went and met him. And he did a very specialized, unique evaluation. He told the boy to come back after he analyzed all of the exams and went through a series of very specific testing. Brought the boy back and he said, that's your problem right there. He pointed to the boy's neck. Okay. Now the boy's very skeptical because he bent through a lot. 
but he decided in desperation he was going to follow through, being a student, driving three hours to go see this doctor. Three hours each way. He, he committed himself to doing what this doctor said. I will tell you, within three months, that boy was 100% back to his full energetic self, full academics, full athletics, and I know that story well because that was me. Okay. At that point, I knew my calling was really clear in life. This is what I was meant to do. Okay. I learned that the key to happiness is to find your passion and pursue it with everything you have. And that's been the key to my happiness. And I hope tonight is going to make a difference to the key to your health and the key to your happiness is Dr. Arbeiten started this evening. I can tell you this, that between Dr. Arbeiten, Dr. Piro, Dr. Rivers, and this amazing support staff, you guys truly have a gift right here right now. You have a real gift. You might not realize it, but you have a special team. And you're agreeing with me. This patient has been with them for over eight years. <laughs> You know, not only is he compassionate, caring, but completely committed to his craft. Completely committed to his craft. He's traveled all around the country, spent tens of thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of dollars at this point, improving himself to be able to train and teach others, but also to deliver the goods, guys. It's all about results, guys. We can talk all we want. But it's all about getting results. Is that true? It's all about results. That's why all you patients are here. And that's why you courageously went out and asked somebody that doesn't understand what we're talking about tonight to be here because you care, number one, but you want to share this. So I thank you for being you and for sharing this gift. I see some of you rubbing your necks as I'm talking. So we'll get to that. <laughs> but I want to give you an opportunity, guys. Um, Dr. Biden has asked me to, to, to share this gift, speaking of gifts, that we have an unbelievable opportunity to share with you tonight. If you are a guest here this evening, you're not currently a patient yet, then you certainly have the ability to become one, at least get a checkup, and that's the first step. You know, do we know if we can help yet? We don't know yet, but a checkup is what's necessary, just as Katie received her checkup, and that's how they found out they could help with her migraines. You're, you're gonna need that full consultation, you're going to need a complete examination, and it's going to be thorough. And you're going to receive a very specific series of films that are going to determine exactly what the cause of the problem is, and if it can be helped, and then what's necessary. Okay. Normally.